Welcome back to the Virtual Antics Podcast. I am so excited because today I have Annie Del Rey with me, and she is an amazing nationally board certified health and wellness coach who has worked with hundreds of clients to help them achieve a life of confidence, wellness, and success. Welcome, Annie. Thank you. Welcome. I feel welcomed to be here. Tell me a little bit about who you are and how you got started. Sure. So I'm from Jersey. I now live in California. Very different. But I got started my career in Jersey. And by that, I mean working a ton of jobs while in school, like trying to make it, trying to make it by, you know what I mean? Like, and that's where I studied psychology. That's the whole reason I bring that up. I have psychology there and just learning about the human mind. And I feel like that's where it all started. Just trying to understand like, what is human behavior? Why do we think this way? Why does it not matter how much money you have or how little money you have and you can still suffer from addiction? Just like, I had a lot of questions and studying psych really helped with that. So I'd say that was, I hope that was the original question of like, how did it start? Yeah, you're good. No, that makes, that's really cool because you should always know, you know, like the background of why someone got into something because it's always usually a really amazing story and you having those questions and, you know, wanting to know more, I think is really a natural thing, especially in our twenties. Right. So that's awesome. And so how do you become a wellness coach? So I didn't really know coaching was a thing, or if I did, it was like an eye roll, like life coach, haha, like this is a BS thing. So I was like, I guess I'll do, I guess I'll do therapy, but I don't really want to do therapy because I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. Like I already grew up around trauma. So I was like, I love therapy. I have a therapist, but I don't want to do this. So what am I going to do? And people were like, well, you can go into research. I don't want to go into research. Like that doesn't sound fun either. And then I learned about coaching. And I learned that there was different areas of coaching and I learned that there was like reputable degrees in it or certifications. And I guess the best way I can describe it is the difference between coaching and therapy. So if that's okay, I'll take a yeah. second to okay. Awesome. So therapy, what therapy is doing is coping in the present, really trying to allow you to like survive in the present. I wouldn't even use the word thrive really. And what you're doing is you're spending a lot of time in the past because you're processing things that happened to you, you're talking it out, and maybe the first time you're acknowledging it, and but spending time in the past, as opposed to coaching, where we are talking about the present and how you're coping, all we care about is the future. We will spend limited time in the past. And that's why they're two separate fields, right? I think therapy is a beautiful thing and definitely plays a role in people's parts, people's parts of their journey. Woo. But coaching is another side of it. Those are the next steps. So when I learned that that was something and that there was a population specifically for that, I was like, all right, that's what I want to do. That's awesome. How long have you been doing that? I graduated with my master's in 2020 for integrative wellness coaching. So like technically three years of under training, under like specifically being trained for it. Yeah, I'd say three years. And what type of people do you help or do they have any similarities? Well, I working for other mental health companies, I've worked with men and women, but for like my private practice, I market to women and I've worked with people for in their teens. And my eldest client was 84 years old, cute, cute as could be, which just shows like at any age you can set goals and, you know, find your layer of happiness. Oh, that's so cool. So I know that a lot of wellness coaches, especially within psychology, usually they focus on like a set of issues. Do you kind of just focus mm -hmm. on the overall happiness or do you have a certain sector that you coach in? So I, great question, by the way, loving this question. I guess there's two parts to that. So okay. one is now as a business grows, like I'm sure, you know, as a businesswoman, they tell you to niche down, like as niche as you could possibly be because it's hard to serve everyone like if that makes sense so or people want to know you specialize in something right like to know a little bit about everything is fantastic but also if you have a specific problem you'd like someone who specializes anyway all of that to say stress management in general is just a huge one and a lot of that is about time management and because of their lack of time management they're stressed so it's like a double-edged sword it's ping-ponging back 
And I would say also another one is confidence in general. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, you're talking to me now. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I have a five and a six year old. I have two businesses plus a podcast and a million other things. And then I have a husband in law enforcement. And I know most entrepreneurs, especially my listeners, we are all stressed the heck out. And so, yeah. Yeah, totally. And that's why that's why I was so down to learn about it and pay a ton mm-hmm. of money to learn about it because I don't want this to sound as if I'm not excited for men. But what I am here on this earth to do is empower women and allow us to be as successful as possible. Again, not anti-men. I've, I've coached probably like 600 people now and at least 300 were men or like 200 men. So I really don't want it to sound like I'm like, screw the men, only the women should rise. <laughs> what I mean is they're great, fantastic, okay. What I'm really focusing on though is women's success and their achievement. And this is sassy, but like ideally making more money than their partners. Like women just that are like killing the game. I send these little clips to my staff all the time. My staff is mature women. I mean, we don't have any men at the moment. I'm open to it, but I help moms make money from home. So that's one of the way I do it by hiring women. And so they, I sent them this clip and it was like a woman talking about how, you know, all men have always been at the higher positions in corporate world and even now in politics and how behind every single man is a woman <laughs> organizing or, you know, or taking care of everything for them. I know my husband, he's very successful in his career. He's about to be assistant warden at a prison. And so uh, he's going to be one of the youngest wardens ever by the time he gets warden, which is super cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's early, early thirties. So yeah, it's insane. Usually when you're assistant warden to put it in hindsight is that you're usually in your fifties to sixties. Yeah. So, so exciting. So, but I know for a fact, he would not be there without me, you know, getting all his dry clean done or helping him with his leadership questions or helping him get through these certain things, you know, and vice versa. I wouldn't have two businesses if I didn't have an amazing husband. But um, I think that is really important. And another um, side note on that is that your target market. So your tar- tar- target market is women. And a lot of people don't realize doesn't mean you only accept women. It just means that right. you're speaking to and you're branding, you're marketing. Those are the ones you're trying to talk to. Now that's like us. We, we, most of my clients are women entrepreneurs and that's who we speak to, but mm-hmm. I have clients and that's okay because yes. they, they see how they see our value. And usually those are my best clients because they push through all the girly stuff. Like our website's girly and they're like, Oh, they have skill. They're really good. I want them. And so I totally get that. It's almost, it's not that you like the guys more because it's not that, but like you really appreciate them putting themselves out there, working with a woman, knowing that, yeah, like you're not their target audience. That's yeah. super cool to make yourself available like that. Yeah. Especially because some of these guys, like it's their first time asking for help. That's a big deal too, that you're like admitting it to a woman, I guess. Yeah, it definitely takes some vulnerability. So that's awesome. I really like that. That's what you're doing. And I think it's definitely, especially after the pandemic, we all need help or coach and I love that the coach is more like the hands-on approach and like really giving you those steps and laying it all out there for you because I feel like in therapy we're trying to figure it out we're talking about it and they, they can give us only so much guidance but a coach is the one that really pushes you through each level and breaks it down and says you know this is the way you go right I mean you could talk about things to your blue in the face in therapy but if you leave a session with me and most coaches you're having action steps and then I'm yeah. asking you about those action steps next time and if you have a challenge we're talking about it in that moment and addressing it before we get off the phone like it is only forward movement ideally and if there was none that's when you take a second to be like well let's talk about what's the deeper issue and it potentially may be that therapy is needed or it's just a roadblock no no one knew covid was going to happen and no one wrote a book about it like in the beginning i should say so do you know what i mean like there was no guidance so people were freaking out. People who were slightly stressed to begin with were now exasperated and like unable to cope. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't do coaching. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, 100%. Because we did see that, you know, I think the whole country was just like, you know, just trying to find their way unless you lived in Florida. Mm-hmm. That much changed in Florida. Okay, there was a little changes, but we had it, we probably had it really easy. But my, my mom actually moved to Florida right when the pandemic, that week that the pandemic was shutting down across the United States. Oh. And my husband drove her down and they were going state to state and 
and they were like, they went to a McDonald's used the restroom and McDonald's was like, I'm sorry, but they're, they're about to announce the closing of the state in like five minutes. Like you guys can't stop here. You can't use the bathroom. They're like, well, they haven't called it. They haven't closed it yet. So let us go. Oh, just a few minutes. Yeah. So they were like literally, cause that's a 24 hour car ride. So they were driving from state to state and I'm so thankful that she got here when she did and that she was able to have the be, you know, be here for the pandemic. But it was definitely so many, you know, mental illnesses came. I feel like a lot of people ended up diagnosed with a lot of mental illnesses and then, or they had a mental illness and then got worse because nationwide pandemic that no one has seen in a very, very long time. (laughs) Nothing quite like it. So. Right. Right. There wasn't a thing that was like what mom should do during a pandemic. Yeah. It, in the beginning, it was mass chaos. And, yeah. and that's what I graduated to. So I graduated May 2020 and COVID shut down. I think like the real shutdowns happened around March. So oh. like I was graduating into a world of people being like, what is going on? Yeah, it's crazy. My kids were little. So I had I had like a what two and a three year old when the pandemic hit. And so every cough, I think I was so hyper aware of my children. I was like, oh, you're coughing. Oh, are you sick? We are um, knocking on all the wood in my house never got COVID. I don't know how we did that, especially in Florida. Yeah. We still had to go work every day. We did survive without that, but man, I was, I had so much anxiety. And then I had like a stepfather that was in his eighties and worried about him. And then we had the vaccine. So I definitely, did you see an increase, especially with your clients like that they've been affected by the pandemic? Oh, it was absolute insanity. It was, it was truly absolute insanity. And I graduated and started working for a mental health company and Mm -hmm. the mental health company worked with three diagnoses. So it was anxiety, depression, and insomnia. So how many people do you think were getting diagnosed during that time for those things? It was an, it was insanity. And there was people who our goals together was getting out of bed every day. And I'm Mm -hmm. not joking. Like that was the goal for them to get out of bed every day. Some were to shower twice a week some were to brush their teeth because truly like their world was rocked and a lot lost their jobs or simply couldn't go to work. So just, and these were people who were like high functioning before, but before something like that hit because no one knew what was going on and there was a lot of fear and just like anxiety. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was absolutely, absolutely insane. And I'm very glad that it's over, (laughs) but I mean, yeah, we're getting COVID, of course, but we're no longer shut down and that we can start our healing journey. So that's awesome that you're able to help, you know, and really help people just progress through life because I think we get stuck sometimes. Like you said, we don't want to get out of bed. We don't want to do X, Y, Z. And so we really need someone that is going to show us the next steps, but also keep us accountable because that's like the biggest part is we need yes. someone to keep us accountable because we're no longer able to. That is like a hundred percent it. It's accountability and, and pay accountability and i don't mean that as in like come work with me and pay me what i mean is it's a bit different than family and friends because Mm -hmm. family and friends can forget they don't have it on the line as much as you do it's just the truth your family and friends love you it's not that they don't love you but if it's your goal it should matter the most to you Mm -hmm. so working with a coach or i don't even know like maybe even i wouldn't even say pay family and friends because that can get challenging Mm -hmm. but having someone that you you are you signed up to be that person's accountability partner. That person's checking in on you whether you did it or not. And they're not gonna cut you slack. They're not a family or friend. They're not gonna make excuses for you. They're gonna ask questions, questions that family and friends don't really wanna ask you or even know to, and questions that you're probably not ready to ask yourself. And that's mm-hmm. okay, right? That's why there are different careers to help to help people on their journey. Yeah. And that's another thing is like, so I own a marketing agency. And so one of the things that I've researched and know of is that, when you actually put your own money and you purchase something, you're more likely to do it than mm. say like something that's free. And because you have a stake in it now, you have a financial stake in it. And so you're more likely to do it. So if you really want to get help, put your money where your mouth is, is like the perfect expression for it because you know, you're more likely to do it. You're That's one way to keep yourself accountable. That is a hundred percent true. It's a hundred percent true. And I know there's a study about it, but I guess this is just like, my limited mindset hold me back but i hate for people to think that means that i'm trying to convince them to pay for me i'm literally just trying to teach them like in the long run you're doing yourself a favor by putting money up because you're investing in your future that's what you have to look at this as because i 
I've given, I've given like six week programs out to people to like friends. I wouldn't so much do it for family. Cause it's hard to coach family. Like, yeah, in a, yeah so. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Like maybe a quick coaching session where they don't know they're getting coached and I'm just talking, but what the hell am I trying or heck am I trying to say? Oh, those kind of programs and people don't show up or they cancel last minute or they don't value it where someone who has paid shows up, they do the homework, they mm -hmm. ask questions. They're like, they're great clients because they invested in themselves. 100%. That's awesome. So where can we find you? Probably. I mean, my website is the, is the easiest place to find me. I am on LinkedIn and Facebook, but I would say going right to my site. Awesome. What's your site? It's AnnieDelray.com. D-E-L-R-E.com. Oh, okay. You got it. I'll show notes. Say that loud. You know, someone has trouble with dyslexia or anything like that. Just always say it out loud as well. My daughter has dyslexia. So I'm learning all sorts of new things. It's very interesting. Yeah. So awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm so happy that you were able to come today and share us all these amazing things, especially when it comes to mental health, mental health, which is, and we will talk to you guys next time.